Hey, what's going on, my friends in tech? Welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be comparing the Google Pixel 8a to the Pixel 7a. This is a requested video. And so in today's video, I am going to go and talk about the specs between both, but also mostly just talk about my experience. Before I get into it, um, if you guys could do me a solid and smash that like button, I would definitely appreciate it. Share this on your social platform so others can find it. And also, if you're looking to try Helium Mobile, you can get one month free. Just use my promo code link into the description and promo code in the description as well. But let's uh, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, so both of these devices are from the A series and the A series, regardless of how some people feel, it's really the affordable flagship, which is something that I had switched over from using uh, Qualcomm mid range chips to using the same flagship chips that you find in the regular Pixel 7 and Pixel 8. Um, the Pixel 7 was released in May 10th, 2023, and the Pixel 8a was released on May 7th, 2024. But with the Pixel 7, what you get with it is you get a 6.1 inch display. Uh, it's got an 81.8% screen to body ratio, 1080p by, by, 20, by 2400 pixels at a 20 by 9 aspect ratio with a 429 pixels per inch density. According to Gorilla Glass 3, it is currently running Android 14 and set to get Android 15. Has a Tensor G2 processor, um, the Mali G710 MP7 GPU, 128 of onboard storage, it's 128 gigabytes, and then 8 gigabytes of RAM, UFS 3.1 for the storage, a 64 megapixel wide angle camera, 26 millimeter lens, then you got a 13 megapixel ultra wide, and you got a 13 megapixel uh, selfie cam at a 20 millimeter lens as well. Um, it records in four, at 4K at 30 frames per second, and it records in 1080p at 30 frames per second, but also at 60 frames per second as well. And if you're wondering about the battery, the battery is a 4385 milliamp hour battery with an 18 watt, 18 watt wire charging and 7.5 watt wireless charging. Um, so not bad at all. It is IP67 water and dust resistant. So you have that level of um, protection there or security there. Um, so moving on over to the Pixel 8a, um, the specifications are almost nearly similar. It's got a 6.1 inch display and it's a 81.6% screen to body ratio, 1080p by uh, 240 pixels at a 20 by nine aspect ratio with a 430 pixels per inch density. According to Gorilla Glass 3, starts off on Android 14. It's also set to get Android 15. Has a Tensor G3 processor. It's a 4 nanometer processor compared to the G2, which is a 5 nanometer processor. Uh, it is using the, the Immortalis G17S MC10 for the GPU. 128 gigabytes of internal storage and also a 256 model as well with 8 gigabytes of RAM, UFS 3.1. For the storage, 64 megapixel camera at a 26 millimeter uh, lens. You have a 13 megapixel f2.2 f with the aperture rating. And then you have a 13 megapixel f2.2 aperture rating, 20 millimeter lens for the selfie cam. And on top of that as well, for those who want to know, it has got a 4492 milliamp hour battery, 18 watt wire charging, and 7.5 watt wireless charging. Um, so those are just some of the specifications regarding the Pixel 8a. And there you have it for specifications. Kind of moving away from that, and really just with both these devices. Um, one could say that they are very similar as far as um, user experience, which is how I really and truly judge a phone. Well, of course, they're Google Pixels. Um, Pixels are known for taking really good photos. They take Decent videos. Um, they have a ton of intelligent features packed into them, especially now with Gemini being something that both these devices are able to operate and run. And so, yeah, you can pretty much almost say that the similarities are greater. However, you know, because I felt the same way too, I guess I can say that I'm on the fence about that and a little bit, you know, change minded. While they both run Android 14 and they both are set to get Android 15 and they both have the same camera sensors for the front 
and for the main and ultra wide sensors on the back. They both have wireless charging. They both have, you know, water and dust resistance. Um, the differences between them are slight. And I'm going to go out on a whim and say that that is because of the Tensor G3. Now, with the Pixel 7 running the Tensor G2, it's a 5 nanometer processor chip that's the architecture built for this device. And so I'm not saying it in a negative way to say the Pixel 7 is like super slow. It's not. But when you run it side by side with the Pixel 8a, as I have for the past couple of weeks, I can say that um, you can clearly see a difference in fluidity of the user interface. You know, um, both of them lack a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And hey, you know, it is what it is, right? Like the last Pixel A series device was the Pixel 5a. But they did bring wireless charging to it, which you can see here. I put it on... Uh, my Qi charger right there, and it's charging up just fine. Uh, both of them have those things. So, like, when it comes to features and stuff like that, very similar, but differences between them is going to be on just the user interface and the fluidity and the experience. Um, using similar apps, using uh, similar services, you can slightly see a difference between them. The Tensor G3 pretty much addressed some of the issues that people felt about the Tensor G2, and so we feel like that, you know, it kind of did a little better. Uh, cameras on them, also you're going to see slightly a difference. I mean, I'll have both uh, photos that I took here at the end of, you know, not the end of the video, but just here in a moment. You'll see them side by side. Um, and that's really um, another thing that you will see the difference on. While they are the same exact camera sensors, there is a slight difference when it comes to post-processing of the photos. Um, I've noticed a slight difference between them. They both look great, okay? You're going to be happy with either one when taking a photo, but comparing them side by side, and you will see a slight difference in the uh, processing, well, post-processing after snapping the photos. Um, the audio between them is another thing that's kind of different that I've noticed. The audio on the Pixel 7a is much quieter than it is on the Pixel 8a. Um, so I don't know if they're using uh, completely different, um, you know, drivers for the, you know, the speaker drivers. But they possibly could be, um, which is something that I felt was an issue with the Pixel 7a. And that was probably one of the negative caveats that, that I talked about in past review videos was that it was pretty quiet. You would really have to have the volume up to 100 on the Pixel 7a to hear things, whereas on the Pixel um, 8a, um, even having it at, you know, 60% volume is loud enough for me to hear content that I'm watching on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram, wherever I'm watching content on. It, you know, it's, it's louder. Uh, when it comes to battery performance between these two, I'll definitely say that the Pixel 8a is obviously going to take the cake here as, you know, it is newer of the two devices that I have before you, but it also has a bigger battery compared to the 7a. And so, you know, I can definitely uh, get a little bit more screen on time and longevity uh, with my Pixel 8a. But the 7a does pretty good in the battery department as well. I mean, if you're wanting an all-day battery, you definitely could achieve that with the Pixel 7a. Um, you'll just get a little bit more longer time with the 8a when it comes down to that. Gaming on this thing, you should be able to do it just fine. I mean, I don't play very heavy intensive games. And so, yeah, you might want to find another creator that does play things like Genshin Impact and stuff like that so they can demo that game for you. I play just some basic easygoing games like Pokemon Go. And um, now I've been playing um, Ninjas Must Die, which is a pretty fun game to play. And they run fine on both phones. No problems, no hiccups or anything like that. It's just on the scrolling and stuff like that, you would see a slight difference. A little jank on the Pixel 7a, but that's due to the Tensor G2 processor. Uh, it's very much more smooth. Both of them are running at 60 hertz uh, for the, the um, refresh rate. Uh, so I don't have their smooth displays turned on. And um, yeah, when it comes down to it too, also like the, the feel of the device, the ergonomics on them, if you want to kind of point at that direction. Yeah, the, the Pixel 7a is more rectangled, you know, and with sharper corners than the Pixel 8a. Um, they are roughly similar, almost on the same size, but not quite so much. So, as I said, um, one thing you'll definitely see here is the fluidity between them. They are both smooth, like I said, 
You'll just see a little bit of jank on the Pixel 7a. But overall, these are still great options to find. And if the Pixel 8a is kind of out of your budget, the Pixel 7a will pretty much bring you just about almost everything that the Pixel 8a is offering, except for one thing. One thing you won't get on the Pixel 7a. And if this isn't important to you, then this might be the deal breaker. And that is if you're actually wanting to have on-device AI, the Pixel 8a is the one that has it. The 7a will be cloud-based AI with Gemini. So you might want to keep that in mind. But that's what I got to say for this comparison video. What are your guys' thoughts? Comment in the comment section, your whatever your thought you're thinking, questions, emotional outbursts. Thanks for checking out today's video. Again, smash that like button. Link in the description for promos. And I'll talk to you on the next one.